Hey there, YouTubers. This is a question answer session. Uh, I'm Dan Strong with Excel VBA is Fun. Today we have a question coming from a gentleman named Stefan, and he has a problem with his database. Every Friday it seems he gets something similar to this. Uh, this is dummy data, but just imagine if this if you were in his shoes, okay? You get this report, and if you can ignore these colored cells here, what well, basically what it is. In this cell, the main thing you're gleaming is when the report was generated from these two dates, so from uh, the 29th of uh, March to May 4th, maybe some projections too. Um, over here, let's see, you have stock and sales for, th these are the names of the store, and then this is a different store, same two right here, and their stock uh, and sales. So however many they have in stock and however many sales for this period. And then another store, their stock and sales, another store. And you see this all the time with, um, what do they call this, non-contiguous data. It's not set up like a regular database. Why? Because each record is kind of jumbled. It has all this multiple layers of information and what we want to see in order to make a pivot table that actually makes sense, that can actually calculate all this stuff, because a pivot table wouldn't know where to even start with this data. What you want to do is you want to have it in a fashion, I'm going to show you my ideal database format. I kind of, uh, first of all we have a date, so I'll put today's date in, um, and then you have the store name, and you go off of just everything related to that store, or that product, or whatever, and then you have another record with the exact same store name, and then uh, perhaps a different product code or, or something like this. Uh, so that's what we're going to do. We're going to take Visual Basic and create a macro that will um, take all this data here and turn it into something that an uh, that a uh, excuse me that a pivot table can actually work with to sum a lot of information. So let's go ahead and get started. Um, so we're going to hit Alt F11. I'm going to I've got a brand new workbook here basically I'm going to create a module that's going to hold our new macro the name of the macro is going to be um, convert data that's what we'll call it convert data because that's what we're going to do we're going to convert this mess here into a workable database that a pivot table can run numbers off of. we can see how many sales were done in a certain date range or which this store did the best or you know how much was sold by product or how much was sold by uh, by whichever store so this is actually going to be pretty awesome so let's go ahead and convert it to that type of a database format first thing you want to do is what date do we want to use you can either use the current day that you're using whenever you run the macro that's going to pop into this cell each time or you can have the user type in a date right before the report runs. Let's just do it that way. So as your beginning we're gonna say uh, let's use answer. Okay, answer equals uh, how about an input box and we'll say type date and that's all we're gonna say. So yeah we don't need anything else. We'll just put that there and so whatever is in here is gonna be the answer. So, and then whatever that date is going to be, let's convert that to a date format. So answer equals C date. Remember that's convert whatever you got into a date format. So now we've converted that into an absolute date format. Um, so that's going to be, um, we'll just call that my date. That way we can know what it is. Answer is kind of bland or vague rather. Then we're going to create a loop that's always going to take row 5, it looks like. Row 5 is where we're going to get our store numbers from. So, um, hmm, let's see, where, where do we go from here? We're going to create a loop. So when we create a loop, we usually do, we got to find out what the last row is. So the bottom most row of this table. It looks like it's 165, but it could be different each time. So we're going to use our little uh, cheat here using 
using TypePilot. LR code is mine. And what it does is it finds out the last row from this particular sheet. Also, it's a good idea to declare your worksheet name. So let's call this one uh, C sheet. And we're going to dim that as a worksheet. And then uh, we'll also set C sheet to equal. And in this case, you know, I don't know if his uh, if his sheet uh, changes all the time. So we'll just say active sheet dot name or no active sheet so the active sheet will now be held in the object called C sheet alright so now we can set our loop up X is going to be equal to what is our starting row here it looks like we start on row 7 with the actual data okay Alt F11 for X equals 7 all the way to our last row which we just figure out over here and we'll see that in action in just a second and then of course we'll have a next X for our loop alright so here we are in the thick of the loop I'll label that here uh, the first thing well let's, let's just uh, hit F8 and debug all the way up to there so sheet, C sheet is going to be the active sheet and we got a question here. Type the date is what we were asking for. So let's just say, uh, what is today's date? 4-7-2013. Hit OK. So uh, answer, we see if we hover is 4-7-2013. But it's in quotes. We want it to not have quotes. We don't want it to be a string. We want it to be an actual date without quotes. So if we use the C date to convert this, my date will then contain an actual date. Notice there's no quotes uh, there. So my date has locked in the date that we're going to use later on. Now we're going through this current worksheet here. So if sh ooh, if C sheet dot cells blah 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 is if the row is actually if we want to say if the row is six then really we don't have any data if the last row is right here then we don't have any data in our database otherwise the last row is going to be seven and then furthermore if it is not then just take whatever the last row is here so let's see you there now uh, there was it was not six it's much higher it's more like 165 is our last row great so x is going to be seven all the way to 165 and now we've got our loop established so what are we gonna do we're going to pop everything over on our ideal database sheet so I'm gonna go ahead and clear up our sheet here by clearing all that and we're gonna loop on this sheet we're gonna start with row 2 and we're gonna go until we can't go anymore so let's actually uh, let's go ahead and uh, declare up that worksheet and get ready so we're also going to dim that one uh, we'll call it ID sheet as a worksheet now it might say you have to start over it sure does you have to start over reset that's alright we're gonna set ID sheet to be equal to this workbook dot sheet and that's gonna be whatever in the world you call that worksheet. It could be sheet 3 or sheet 4 if you just make a new sheet and you just want it to stay there. That's fine. In this case we're calling it Ideal DB. That's the sheet name. Then we can utilize that. In fact right before the loop we'll set up what's the starting row oops what's the starting row on our on our on our new page excuse me. Y is going to be 2. That's our starting row and we'll use y to use uh, for the row number with with that sheet and then x is going to be following along with this sheet so we'll see how that uh, inter interacts with each other also we could say um, what was the um, store number store store row is five it looks like on row five here is always going to contain the store number so we can put a variable there because we'll need to go through there um, it looks like one two three four five six seven column seven is where we're um, going to start looping through the stores so 
guess we could say store call like the column we want to start with is seven and then that may change uh, throughout so well, let's, let's just uh, take us through all that so far type the date what do we say we're going to use uh, 4 7 that's today's day 2013 hit F8 we convert it to a date now in the last row we've established 165 Y is our starting row on the other sheet store row is going to be 5 store column is going to be 7 and now we're going to loop from 7 all the way to 165 because that's this one all the way to the bottom of the database yada yada let's get started to the very first one actually uh, we're going to loop from here all the way to lord they got a lot of stores all the way to whatever in the world column this one is DZ we're gonna go from here all the way to here and each store we're gonna write down the uh, product code and and what they have in stock for that particular store so and, and you could do it one way or the other you could loop through here and go here and then grab this one and this one and this one this one and then go here and but I think we're probably going to just go uh, row 7 and we're gonna get each product code uh, for the stores so bear with me here this might be a little bit long but uh, you can skip around if you'd like but this is just real life you know you got projects and you got bad data that you're handed left and right from different people and you gotta figure out a way to convert it automatically rather than you copying and pasting stuff for like six hours every weekend no you don't need to do that first thing we're going to do is we're going to get uh, the current product code and we will lock and load those for a little bit so let's see um, uh, let's see how do we set it up on the other sheet in fact, I think I'm going to take a few moments to give these columns some names. That way we can uh, we can batch that out a little easier. So one sheet is called C sheet, and then the other one's called ID sheet. So we'll just say C prod is column one. C P name is going to be two. C E A N is column three. C old new is column four. Whoops. And this is just uh, so let's see. We'll say C price is five, and C label is six. C stock. No, no, we're not going to go any further than that. That's where our loop comes in. Okay, and then on the other sheet, ID, prod, I think uh, we have the same ones. Product, product name, blah, 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 label, stock, sales. Only it starts with date. So actually, what I'm going to do is control C to copy, right click, and my computer's locking up. Right click, and we'll just transpose. See how I did that? Transpose, and then I'll control C to copy that. And we can manipulate that a little bit. I just copied. So we're going to say ID date is 1. ID store name is 2. And then we have these other ones that are pretty much the same. So actually, I might just just as well copy those here. Uh, product, price, label. Yeah. Copy those. 3, 4, 5 column 6, column 7, column 8 and then we have 9 and 10 are stocks and, and uh, sales and in fact I need to change these to say ID and then uh, just to keep them you know the same ID stock is 9 and ID sales is 10. We can use these columns in a moment to set these all up to be working together. So first thing we're going to do, actually let's backtrack a little bit because now I want to utilize those uh, column names here. Alright, now these are all being memorized by the system. 
So if I point to one, it knows what the value is. Uh, we need to get the... What do we need to get here? The date needs to be plugged in here. Let's see, Alt-E-A-A -A to clear out everything. I don't want that to be bold. So the date is going to be my date. So let's see, what was that sheet called? ID sheet dot cells. And what, remember, our starting row was Y, and that will change. We'll add one to each each uh, record that we do. Column index is going to be ID date. That was, I believe, whoops, equals my date. So let's see. Uh, column two, or excuse me, row two, column one, that's right there. Uh, equals my date. So that's the first thing that we want done. It'll plug in the date right there. And the next thing that we want to do, id sheet dot cells, y comma id, what was the next column that we had? Stored id store name. So that's going to be equal to, and we got to actually, we have to gleam that. The store name is going to be uh, column column 7 what was that we put it in store call so store column is going to change that's going to be C sheet that was our that was our uh, initial uh, sheet dot cells and we're going to use the column uh, store call um, oops store row comma store column okay so if we take a look at what that means store row was five and store column is seven so row five and column seven now the column seven might change as we increment store column so let's see how that works right there let's backtrack it and we'll click over here and take a look at what that does so this cell two two that's right here b2 equals that do, 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 do. So let's hit F8. Bunch of Russian symbols and stuff, but there's our store name, okay? And the product code. Product code. We're going to gleam the rest of this stuff, I believe, from here all the way to here. Yeah, we're going to gleam all that, and then we can just go to the next record. Or we can actually uh, take all that data the same and go to the next store. Yeah, that's probably what we'll have to do. That's all right. This is a lot of data here, and to put it in a database format is going to take a lot more data. But once we get it set up, we won't have to do any typing. We'll just hit a button, and it'll whoosh, done. So let's get it set up a little bit more. The next thing that we need is the product code. So this should be the easy part. Um, ID sheet dot cells y comma ID P code I think it was equals C sheet dot cells uh, X comma and what was this P code or prod maybe C prod I don't know, double check that usually I think this through a little bit more I apologize in a, in advance ID prod so this needs to be ID prod. Okay. So let's double check that. Looks like when I hover over that, that's that's the product code that we need. 91275.97. All right, cool. So that'll uh pop that over here. Let's click over here and take a look at what it does when I debug through. Move my little arrow right there and hit F8 and I put the product code, product name and all that stuff. We can actually take this beautiful little line of code, control C and paste it a few times. Oopsie. I didn't put, hit my enter key very well there, did I? All right, that may be too many, but so we have uh the product, then we need the product name. What do we name that? P name and C P name. So C P name. Then we had the uh E A N so I D E A N 
I don't care about capitalization anymore. I'm just rushing through this. Who am I kidding? I'll go ahead and capitalize it. Then uh, we have... Yeah, those look good. Uh, then we had the old and new. I think I just put O in, maybe. ID O. O new, I think I did. And then C. O new. And clicking over there. Yep, they, they have assigned things there. Then we have ID, what did I put, price, and then C, price, let's double check, click away and hover, yep, they have values there. Then we had a label, I think I just put ID label and C, label, to represent which, you know, which, uh, worksheet they were, label, label, looks good. Oh, C label. Column one, really? Wow, that doesn't look right. C label should be one, two, three, four, five, six. Hmm, double check that. Very interesting. Okay. C label should be six. Okay, I'll address that here in a second. Sometimes whenever you're typing over stuff, it gets a little screwy, so I'll restart the macro here in a second. I just want to finish this up really quick. So we have our game plan here. Because we're, uh, believe it or not, we're pretty much done. Uh, ID product, uh, so after label, we got stock and sales, and then we're done. ID stock, C stock, ID sales C sales alright uh, let's take a look at those 10 oh, is there a C sales oh there wasn't a stock or sales from there so we'll have to get the stock and sales from something else So that's going to be uh, the column for that is going to be our stock, current stock column, and our current sales column could be that plus one. So what do we call that? Uh, store call. The store column that we're currently on is just happens to be the same as our stock column. So we could use that one. And this would be store column plus one. Meaning this column plus one would be this take get the sales from that, and then we could just do this cell plus two and grab the stuff for that store, and loop on through. Let's try that. Let's uh, let's totally stop this macro, start it all over. The date we're going to use is four seven two thousand thirteen. Hit OK. F eight F eight F eight F eight. That's our last row. Blah blah blah. C label is six this time thank goodness alright here's our loop let's take a look over here starting there yeah 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 so it'll actually write over that do 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 do, do. product name EAN why does it do that okay we'll address that in a minute but that's correct uh, to, to, to old or new retail price label, and then see this is the store column, which is column seven. This will be seven plus one. So there's your zero and zero sales. Okay, and we don't want to go to the next X yet. Why? Because we're not ready to go here. All we have is this much, or excuse me, all we have is from here to here. We also need to get this data, but then the second store stock and sales and then the third store stock and sales and stay on row X until we've gone all the way to the end so really we need to find out what is the last column in row 5 and we need to go from row 7 all the way to this row each for each X so we probably need to backtrack a little bit and grab that shouldn't we yes we should so let's get the last row for that LR code and we'll get a special LR we'll call this column column LR or something CLR 
and what we're getting it from C sheet so we need to make sure that we are telling it which worksheet we're looking for and we're getting the column not the row so we need to get the column from row 5 in this case so um, columns dot count uh, 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 let's see Oop, scratch that reverse it okay so we're checking out oh we're gonna start in the cell that is in row five and the most furthest most to the right the columns dot count number of column uh, and then we're going to the end but we're using XL to left not XL up because we're gonna basically what we're telling Excel to do is start all the way over here on row 5 at the most rightmost cell and then use control left Excel to left going to the end and find that that column so uh, actually we don't need most of this stuff here we'll just say that that is And I'm going to get rid of some of the stuff. If you have watched any of my other videos, you'll know um, kind of more about what I'm doing here. So I'm sorry I'm blazing through it, but this is kind of a long thing. So this is going to be our our uh, last column. Last column is going to be that number. And so we'll go from 7 to uh, to our last column. And that's going to be a different loop within this loop. So once we get that, uh, X is going to be our starting row, and then we're going to grab each different store. So for for Z equals, uh, let's double check that. Z equals what is this? Column seven here. Column seven all the way to whatever variable we just set. Z equals seven to last call last column and then we're going to say step two what does that mean it means we're going to go by twos every time you go to the next z um, you're going to go instead of going to the next one it would be stepping over counting by two you can also say step negative two if you were wanting to go backwards or something like this. Step step negative one. Uh, so that's a cool thing we can do is we can jump over to go to the next stop stock and sales for that. And uh, let's see how that works. I'm going to go ahead and indent all this jive here by hitting tab, and then we'll say next Z. Now let's see how this is going here. I'm going to kind of start over and we'll stop it right here when we get to the loop. So they want the date 4 7 2013. Hit OK. Uh, so okay we've gotten to column 7. We're going to be here a little while until we go all the way from here and get every single sore on the other page. So the first things first we get, uh, let's take a look at what's going on here. We get this store's uh, information. I don't like that. The EAN, I'm going to add a text string to it so that it converts it to a text string. Let's see if that helps anything. Alright, that looks a little better. And then new 19.9, blah, blah, blah. Store column, store column. Uh, plus seven and uh, so now y is going to be y plus one because we want to be on column three now and also store column needs to store column needs to equal itself plus two so we already got the the uh, stock and sales for that particular store so now we're going to go to the next store and get all that stuff so let's see what happens hit F8 Y is now going to be 3 store column is now going to be column 9 okay and now we will hop over to 
uh, when I hit next Z, it should be 9 because we're stepping by 2's. So let's hover over Z. Yeah, it's 9. Okay, so now we're going to get the same date as we were, and we're going to use row 3 instead of row 2. So I hope you're keeping up. If you have any questions, give me a holler. It's going to be a new store, I think, for the same row. So there's that store here. That's a long name there. And then we got uh, that same product. And then all this stuff should be the same pretty much. And uh, But when we, whenever we get to this one right here, the store column is now column 9. And store column plus 1, of course, is column 10. So now we would be like, uh, we'd still be on row 7 copying all this data. But now we're on like 9 and 10 getting the stock and sales for that store and then we'll get it for the next store for the same product until we get all the way to the end and then we'll start over and uh, we'll go to the next X which will be on row 8 and we'll do the same jive for all these so this is actually formulating pretty well let's see just gotta master these loops and you'll be good to go alright so you got the uh, 0 and 0 and then we increment that to the next row row 4 and of course this is going to be on column 11 over there Let's do it some more. Let's loop through a little bit more and take a look at our progress here in a second. So I'm just rushing through a little bit here. You notice we're still on the same product, so we're still on on row X, which is currently 7 on that other sheet. I'm going to hold down F8 and just let it blaze through a little bit. It goes a lot faster if you let it, but when you hold down F8 and debug a little bit, uh, in fact, let's uh, click right here so it'll go through all through the columns and then it'll be ready for the next product. I'm going to hit F5. So, wow, you can see under here it just did a whole bunch of stuff. That was all that was all the columns for that product right here. Okay? And now we're on row 64 and we're ready to move on to the next X. So, if I hit F8, now we're on Col uh, row 8 here and we'll be concentrating on all this for each stock and sales so you'll see at the end of this that you can make a pretty sweet pivot table now that you have all this data organized okay so let's hit F5 again and we will uh, skip to the next product here let's see I'm gonna click over here so we can see our progress hit F8 or F5 and it stopped right before it goes to the next product but you can see, oh my, what have we done here? What have we done here? So this is going to be where we debug a little bit. I'm going to hit F8 and see what happened here. The last column is still 130. So, all right, where are we at? Y is 126. I don't know what happened there. It may be stuck. Let's see. Uh, 126. Comma one is my date, and then that's the uh, okay. All right, all right, okay. Um, the store column is probably keep keeps going, and we need to start that over. So what we need to say here is the column for this uh, at each. Yeah, 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 yeah. Of course, store column is store row. We're gonna we're gonna control X. We're gonna um. We're going to put those for each time we go to a new product. We'll start these over afresh on column 7. That way it doesn't keep skipping by 2. It'll actually be at 7 for this new loop. So let's close this down and we'll, uh, we'll run it from scratch. Okay, let's go up to the control up. Let's take all this data that we have so far. Control shift down, control shift right, hit delete, and let's start over. And uh, I think you'll be happy with what happens. I'm going to hit F5 to get started. All right, type the date 4 7 2013, hit enter. And now it is. Where is it stop? Is it run? Okay, what have I done here? 4 7 2013, hit OK. Okay, so we're looping through here. They don't make it too easy for us, do they? For x equals 7 to lr, what is this l? Why is lr not working here? 
Do we not have LR anymore? Where'd it go? Let's see here. There's LR. C sheet dot cells row six. Well, that doesn't make sense. Let's stop it right here and we'll start over again. Hit a five. Four seven twenty thirteen. Okay. If that equals six it's not, it is uh C G two 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 hundred sixty five. Okay, that's good. Last column is 130. Okay, for x equals 7 all the way to 165. That was freaky, but now it's working. Okay, and then we got to the z is going to be 7 to last column. Stepping 2, I'm going to hit F5. Okay, now it decided it feels like working again. Go figure. Alright, so uh, let's take a look over here what just happened got the first one now uh, I'll show you the change we just did store column is not going to be 133 now it's going to go back to being column 7 and that way it'll work on the new product which is on line 8 here so store column is now going to be 7 again and now everything should be honky dory let's take a look uh, behind us there whoops whoop Alright, hit F8, 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 alright, so I'm going to hit F5 and zip to the next one. Everything looks good, that's a new product here. So, um, pretty much that's it. Uh, then we can, we'll uh, let it go ahead and go through all the products and double check our work. Take that off, I'm going to hit F5. And it's going to run for a few seconds because we haven't taken screen. Oh, it's done. So now we have like a gazillion different lines. We have like 9,000 lines here. And we can set up a pretty sweet table here. Let's go ahead and save this before something crazy happens. Uh, let's hit insert. And we'll go to pivot table. And we'll put it on a new sheet and everything looks fine here. Um, boy, I do not... I have not used the old format for some time, so excuse me. Let's say um, store name, okay? So there's your store name. Let's say, uh, I'll, I'll, let's put that in the filter here. I only want to see results for this particular store name right here. Let's deselect all of them, and I only want to see results for this store and this store, and um, and I only want to see. Uh, well, let's let's put this the product name in the row labels here, and then we want to see what we have in stock. So we'll put stock in here, or maybe we'll put that here. So here's how many we have in stock, and uh, not much going on there. Wow. Um, how about uh, sales? Let's see how many sales we got going on for this product. Okay. Bad choice there. Okay, how about a different store, huh? <laughs> Let's take the filter off. Um, we want to see all of them. Okay, so the total we have in stock for all of the stores is 11 of this product. And uh, we could even add the product code, like uh, right here, I guess. Product code here. Looks like we have 15 of those. So we could collapse that if we wanted to. Anyway, whatever you're looking to get at, uh, you could do by manipulating pivot tables. And I'm not going to do a lot on pivot tables. Of course, you could just click anywhere in here and click on pivot chart. And uh, depending on what type you're wanting, you could put a chart there. That's giving you a lot more details than you want to have on a nice little report. But if you wanted to take out the uh, the product code and product name maybe and just have like a sum of stock or sum of sales or if you wanted to have a sum of the sales for for this particular store or a particular region then uh, that would make a better looking chart maybe uh, so and then you could also of course if now that we have added dates so we could have we could add to this table later on 
and uh, we could use some VBA code to have it figure out to start the new Y. Y is not going to be 2 anymore. You don't want to overwrite your data. But now it's going to be, uh, pardon me, y, and then you could have the next row start here and run the next report next Friday or something like this. So I hope that helps, uh, Stefan, or Stefan, pardon me. And I hope that helps you. Uh, you can reorganize your data, and I will definitely email you this man. Um, uh, but I mean, that's that's how you typically, hopefully, they can start sending you the data the way you need to receive it. This way, where it's already spelled out, and you just have you don't have a gazillion columns. You just want to have one uh, record that you're messing with, or one date, and then those records and one and then the stock and sales and then you need to have the same a lot of the same data rehashed but then maybe a different the same product but the different store and then all this stuff is the same and then the stock and sales for that one that way your pivot table can actually read it it needs to be laid out in a database setting so but I know a lot of people will hand you a sheet like this with all these different columns and all these different rows repeating information stock and sales for this one stock and sales for that one and a computer just can't read it like that it just won't um we're not there yet we're not the starship enterprise with a crazy awesome computer that talks to you and stuff so uh thanks for watching and i hope this helped and if you have any more questions please give me a holler thank you